Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is world location. Let's run through our quick little example. I have a few items. We're going to cover how they're set up, but basically I'm using the world location setter and the getter to get the location of this cube here and then increase its Z a little bit every single frame. And that's it. I'm just saying, hey, where are you in the world? And let's move you up a little bit. But let's see how that interacts with everything else. We can ignore this error. It's just for our example project. It doesn't actually affect anything. Looking at our example item, which is going to be here, which is not this one. There we go. It's this one right here. We have two nodes, a get world location and a set world location. If we right click and get world location, we're actually going to have two different versions of the get world location. Context, context sensitive checked is going to give us some suggestions. It's going to say, hey, you have a few scene components already in this blueprint. Would you like to get the world location of a certain one? It's going to give us the ones we can use. In this case, if I did cube, we're going to get the world location node. We're going to have the cube plugged in automatically. A scene component is pretty much an actor component, a blueprint component. One of these items you can add in here that has a scene component as one of its parents. Basically, the scene component is going to give it access to things like the transform, the location, rotation, and scale. So that way it's physically somewhere in the world. If you have something that doesn't have a physical place in the world, like for example, pawn sensing right here, if we were to do get world location, you're going to notice pawn sensing doesn't show up. Pawn sensing doesn't have a physical existence, therefore it's not going to have a location. We can't use it. The node itself takes in the scene component and outputs a vector 3. The vector 3 is the location, and of course we can split it and get the x, y, and z values which is what I'm doing here for our example. The setter node, well, it's going to work pretty much the same. Set world location. It's going to give us a few suggestions. Or if we uncheck it, it's going to give us just the setter node without anything plugged in. It takes another scene component for the input, so any of these items. A location, where in the world are we going to put it? We can split it, so we can get the X, Y, and Z. And then it has sweep and teleport as Boolean inputs. The one output is a sweep hit result, and we're going to talk about these both shortly. So, what am I doing here? I take my current static mesh, which is my white cube here. I'm asking it where in the world it is, and then I'm going to add a little bit to the Z. And that's all I'm doing. So that's why when we hit play, every frame it moves up 0.1 or a tenth of a unit every frame. Now, in terms of interaction and how things work together, this is something that's important to note. The world location is where in the world is this item. It is independent of the relative position, location, rotation, transform, all those words. It's independent of the parent. It is simply where in the world is it. What do I mean by that? Let's drag in our example item here and let's set itself to zero. Right now, the parent is at zero. Right now, my individual cube, if I was to click on it, is at 250, zero, and zero. And it is actually at 250, zero, and zero because not only is it relative to the parent, this position, in terms of the world, that's where it's at as well. If I was to move the parent, and let's say I move the parent up 100 on the Z, that means the value in the world of this child should be up 100. But if you look here, it hasn't changed. This value in here is going to be a relative position. The world position, the world location, is actually different and it's not this value here. So that's something to keep in mind when you're working with things that are set up in a hierarchy like this. You may be like, well, where is this item in my world? If it's a child and it's part of a blueprint and such, the actual position here is not going to be the world position. The world position is going to be when the game says, hey, where are you in the actual world? 
Not where are you relative to your parent, but hey, where are you? And we're going to get back a different value. So let's delete this, and I can show you that. Let's find the correct blueprint. We're going to hope a print, and we're going to print where in the world is this location. Go ahead and hit play, and we're going to have our example here. Let me reset this to zero, and now our root item is at zero, zero, zero. Our world location of this individual item we're messing with right now is 250, zero, and an escalating Z value. We talked about this before. Remember when we moved this actor's root up on the Z100? It didn't move this Z value. It still showed 250, zero, zero. Well, if you notice here, it actually changed it. We can actually go the opposite direction. Let's aim for negative 600 here in a second. And this should change to about zero once we apply negative 600 to the entire thing. And as you can see, there we go. And now it's going up. So even though any changes I may make to my root object are relative to all the children, all the nodes for the world location care about is physically where in the world is it. This item, well, it's here. This item is here. This item is here. And again, in our little example here, each of these items, this one, this one, the sphere, the cube, the cone, and the cube, each have their own individual world locations. In terms of sweeping and teleporting, sweeping technically isn't going to work right if it's a child, and I'll show you this here in a second. However, if it's not a child that you're working with, it's going to work fine. What is sweeping? Let me hook my other example up here. All we're going to do on this one is simply move over the Y value a little bit. So see how it's moving towards this block. This is a blocking volume. It should block anything it comes into contact with. And as you can see there, it kind of, I almost got crushed into it. However, as you can see, it's going through. It is not blocking this item. If we go back in here and let's, let's bump this up to one so it goes quicker. We'll turn on sweeping. We'll hit play, and we'll try not to fall off the edge. You'll notice it actually doesn't block it. The sweeping, if we read the tooltip, notes only the root component is swept and checked for blocking collision. Because my item, remember we're moving the individual component here this direction, not the actual whole item, and the whole item has a root of my sphere, even though this item is moving over and hits my blocking wall, this sphere is nowhere near the blocking wall. Therefore, the collision check doesn't happen. It's not going to see a collision incident. It's not going to cause an overlap or a blocking event. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, if I was to take my sphere, let's hook up my sphere here. And let's move the sphere as my scene component. Oops, let's unhook the stack mesh. And Move the sphere down here is my getter. Here we go. There we go. You're going to notice it now blocks. You'll notice this cube still goes through, and you notice this cube still goes through partially. But you notice the sphere itself is now blocked from moving, and it's going to stop. It can no longer move because it's sweeping. Every single frame as it tries to move, not every single frame, every time it tries to move, it goes from the origin to the destination. And if sweeping is checked, it will check to see if it's physically blocked as well as virtually blocked in terms of an overlap or a trigger, and it will trigger an overlap. So if we uncheck sweep and remove it, it's going to go right through. Nothing's going to physically interact with it. So if you want physical interaction or triggering, make sure your sweep is turned on when you're doing a set location. Teleport basically is for physics. If teleport is enabled and you make a movement, it's going to move it instantly. Physics basically pauses. Movement occurs. Physics unpauses. Physics really has no idea of what happened. Therefore, you're not going to get any wild, crazy flailing of limbs and things like that. If you uncheck teleport, which is the default, and you move something a big distance, physics will attempt to simulate, and you may have a wild reaction. Imagine, for example, if you have an octopus, and it moves... 200 units instantly and its legs are set up as physical appendages, it might wildly flay about. But if you want that octopus to teleport, kind of like in Star Trek and things like that, 
use the teleport option, boom, it instantly moves, and it doesn't automatically, it doesn't even realize it moves, so it's like, okay, well, I don't need to flail about crazily. Sweep hit result is just simply a hit result. We can always break the hit result if we want, and it gives us just a result if we hit something. Simple as that. If you're sweeping, so this is true, and your sweeping result hits something, well, not necessarily hit something, if you're sweeping, here's your hit result. And you can, of course, see if you hit something or overlap something here. So keep that in mind. Your hit result is if you're sweeping. Those are going to wrap up our two nodes, the setter and the getter for world location. Just I reiterated a few times. Just keep this in mind. This is the world location. It is not necessarily going to – it may be relative to your root. However, it is independent of your root. So even if your root is in one place and you're in another – and you set the world location, it's going to move this item, the whatever you've moved, physically to the new location and then update itself relative to the parent. 